Hello, welcome back to Pigskin Offense. My name is Coach Plyler, and in today's video, we are going to be uh, going over and discussing a playbook that I made for youth football. Okay, um, now when it comes to youth football offensively, obviously you want to keep it simple, right? From a formation standpoint, plays, how you communicate, you know, how you talk about assignments on plays and, and just how you word stuff in general, you always want to keep it simple with them because they can only take so much. Um, okay. Now, as we're going through this playbook, keep in mind that I designed this offense for the highest level of youth football. Okay. Um, so that being said, some of you may look at this and say, well, that's a lot for a youth football offense. That's okay. All right, you don't have to take everything from this office. You don't have to run the whole system to be successful with it. Are there certain things that you need to have regardless of talent or you know how much your kids can handle? Yes. You know, and, and I'll definitely go over the things that I think you have to have to run this system. You know, the, the plays and the formations that you have to have. Okay. Really, as far as the formations go, there's only like two that you really have to have. Um, so that being said, uh, you know, just take, if you're going to run this system, you know, again, you don't have to run the whole thing, take bits and pieces from it and tailor it to the types of kids that you have and how much they can handle and, you know, put on a little bit of it, <coughs> sorry, put on a little bit of it, see how they handle it. Once they get a grasp of it and you, you feel comfortable with it, try to add a little bit more. You know, and just keep trying to add on uh, with it, okay? So the offense, it doesn't really have like a set name. Uh, but basically, it's a two-back offense. It's offset eye, okay? Strong eye, weak eye. And it's mainly a zone run offense. So inside zone, outside zone. A couple of complimentary runs. A quick passing game. And some play action concepts, Okay. And the way everything is communicated in this offense, from the place, the formations, like it's all very simple communication. Everyone's told what to do. Okay. Um, so in this video, we're going to talk about the formations and the motions that are in this offense. Okay. And don't freak out. There's only two motions. Okay. <laughs> um, I know motion can be a scary term when you talk about youth football. There's only two motions. And, um, there's really only certain times when you're going to want to use them. Okay. So let's talk about the formations. So I'm going to show you guys the, the base formations. And these two formations I'm going to show you, if you're going to run this offense, you at least have to have these formations. All right. So the first one is called right. Okay. And this is basically just a strong eye formation time. Okay, so here's the right formation. All right, so you got your tight end or your Y on the ball on the right side. You've got your flanker or your Z off the ball on the right side. The X or your split in on the ball on the left side. Your fullback offset to the right and your halfback uh, behind the quarterback. Now, as far as splits and alignments go, for the offensive line, I would say two foot splits. OK, and when you get some smarter offensive linemen, if you have some smart offensive linemen, you can tell them the base out of a two foot split and then kind of adjust from there based on their own ability and the play call and things like that. Um, you know, I, I, I like to do that with offensive line, you know, give them a base split and then say, OK, work from here, you know. Um, so it's just going to be how much can they handle again. OK. You're tied in, I would say, three feet, all right? Your X and your Z, as you know, as far as how far out should my receivers be, really it's going to depend on how strong of an arm does your quarterback have, okay? Um, if he's a guy that can, that's got a pretty decent arm, then I would say put these guys on the tops of the numbers, okay? 
So have them line up on the side of the numbers that's closer to the middle of the field. Uh, if he doesn't have that strong of an arm, I would say probably line him up four or five yards inside the numbers. Okay. I mean, it's youth football, so you're going to have to make adjustments based on your kids. As far as depth of the backs go, again, it's going to depend on your kids. But I would say as a base, have your fullback. I would say have his toes at three yards. Okay. I know it's a, that's probably a little deep. Um, you know, but there's a reason for that. Okay. And you'll see when we get into the plays why he needs to be, you know, have his toes at a depth of three yards. For the halfback, I would say have his toes at six yards. Okay. I would say no more than seven, though. Somewhere between five to seven yards uh, for the halfback. Okay. Somewhere between five to seven yards. Um, just so he can get a good downhill, you know, attack speed going. All right. Um, the main ball carrier in this offense is going to be the halfback. The fullback does have one play that goes to him. It's just kind of a counter off the inside zone uh, look. Um, sorry, the outside zone look. Uh, but your main ball carrier is going to be the halfback. So you want to put, you know, if you got a stud, you know, put him there. Okay, because he's probably going to get more touches in this offense than anybody else. Um, your tight end, if you are going to throw the ball, your tight end needs to have some decent hands because he'll probably get a good amount of catches. Uh, your X and your Z, these guys need to have some speed about them. Okay, they don't just need to be little yahoos that you stick out there because they can't go anywhere else. Okay, because, you know, all right, in youth football that tends to happen. Okay. Um, I mean, and you still may have to do that just because they can't play anywhere else. Um, you know, but don't ever count them out. You know, uh, still coach them up because, you know, you never know what they may turn into. All right. But these guys, ideally, your starters need to have some speed about them. Okay. Um, and again, what kind of routes they run, what you do with the passing game is going to depend on the arm strength of your quarterback, obviously. Okay. Uh, as far as offensive line goes, they need to be relatively smart. I mean, you're going to teach them a lot of stuff. Um, but I would say uh, your guards, you know, out of your starting five offensive linemen, I would say your tackles probably need to be the more athletic ones just because of the nature of what you're going to be doing um, in the run game. Okay, because especially nowadays, defensive ends are getting a lot more athletic and a lot quicker. You know, back in the day, defensive ends were the, the big, slow post players in basketball, right? Well, now these guys are becoming a lot more athletic. They're becoming a lot quicker off the ball. And, and you know, it's hard for a big, slow lineman to deal with them. So put your more athletic lineman at tackle, at the tackles. Um and then put your next two most athletic ones at the guards. Okay, um, really out of the starting, out of your starting five offensive linemen, your center should be the worst one. Now that doesn't mean he's a bad player. It's just out of the starting five, he needs to be the worst one. Okay, um, because really the guards and the tackles they're going to provide the key blocks on basically every play in this offense. Okay, so they need to be the better ones. All right, so this is the right formation. Okay. So if we call left, right, the halfback stays where he's at. The linemen stay where they're at. This is not an offense where the linemen switch sides. I hate that. <laughs> I get why, you know, that's mainly something you see in like a wing T offense or a slot T or like a double wing. I get why they do that. I just, I've never been a fan of it. Keep your right, keep your guys on the right side on the right side, keep your guys on the left side on the left side. Okay. Uh, so the left formation. Now you're tied in, your Y is gonna go to the left. Okay. Your Z is gonna go to the left. The X is gonna go to the right. He goes away from the call. And now your fullback is offset to the left. Now, one thing I didn't really go over is how far do you want your fullback to be offset? Again, really it's gonna depend on his athletic ability. But I would say as far as offsetting your fullback goes, I would tell him 
to uh, split the outside leg of the guard. Okay, line up his crotch even with the outside foot of the guard, basically. Okay, uh, that's how far I would offset him. All right. So this is the left formation. So pretty simple, right and left. These are the base formations. All other formations in this offense are going to come off position tag. So let's start talking about those. So I'm going to go back to a right formation. Okay, so there's our right formation. Okay, the first tag we're going to go over. Now, as far as the position tags go, the only position that has more than one tag is the tight end. The tight end has two. The Z has one, and the fullback has one. That's it. The tight end has two, but that's it. All right, there's only four tags, four position tags. Okay, so we're going to talk about the fullback tag. All right, the fullback tag. Okay, is is flip. Okay, flip tells the fullback to offset away from the strength, away from the call. So if we call right flip, okay. Normally in the right formation, he's offset to the right. When we call right flip, now he's offset to the left. And this is how you get into your weak eye formation. In this offense, you just tag the fullback on a foot call. So if we call left flip, now he's offset to the right. Okay, I'm just going to do all these tags out of a right formation just for the sake of time. So that's flip. Okay, it tells the fullback to go to the opposite side. Okay. Now, the next one I'm going to talk about is the Z. His tag is twins. All right, so if I call right twins, that tells the Z he's going to move over to the other side and be the number two receiver on the same side as X. Okay, he's still going to be off the ball, but this is just your basic twin set. Okay. Again, alignment's going to depend on the type of athlete you have, but as a base, I would say just split the difference between the X and the tackle. Okay? Just keep it simple like that. All right? Um, now, one thing I haven't said yet is, you know, to me, when you create position tags, if you're going to have a, a, an offensive system, a formation system where you're going to have tags, every tag needs to have a purpose. Don't just have a tag just to have a tag. You know, don't have a tag just to send a guy to a different spot. Every tag needs to have a purpose. The purpose of the flip tag is so you can run your zone runs either side, as you'll see when we get into the zone run game. The purpose of the twins tag, obviously there's reasons in the passing game that you would want to use this, but also you could use this in the run game. You might be able to move a linebacker out of the box. Okay, You could provide an extra blocker on the edge. This, you, know, you could line up in this formation. And even add a flip tag onto it. And that's the thing about this offense that you can create so many formations. You can combine all these tags together. So you can get in right flip twins. Okay, this would be called right flip twins. Okay. And you could run toss sweep this way to the twins because now you've got an extra blocker. So you could run toss sweep to the weak side. So you could use this tag to take away some formation tendencies right to make it to where the defense isn't going to sit there and say okay they're always going to run on the tight end side now you've got a, the ability to run weak side uh, with an extra blocker over here there's still some plays in the offense you can run weak side without this tent but this one really helps especially with the outside runs with stretch and toss which we'll get into those plays in another video all right so that's the twins tag Okay, 
Now we're going to talk about the tight end tags. He has two. Okay, he has two. The first one is called flex. All flex does is it tells the tight end, stay on the ball, line up as the number two receiver. Basically split the difference between the tackle and the Z. Okay. And the tight end always goes to the strength of the call. He's never going to have a tag that tells him to go away from strength. Okay. So this would be this would be right flex. Okay, this would be right flex right here. Okay, so he just moves out to the number two receiver position. The other tag for the tight end is open. Now, this is one that your Z also has to know. So open tells the tight end, stay on the ball, but move out to the number one receiver position. So, again, it depends on the type of athlete you have, how far out you want him. But it also tells the Z to line up as the number two receiver. So kind of like a twins alignment, but he stays on the tight end side. So the Z kind of has to know this tag as well. All right? So this would be right open right here. Okay? So those are all the tags. Um, now, again, you can combine these to create a lot of different formations. You can combine, you know, these tags. Uh, you know, you can get a right flip twins open. Okay? Uh, you know, you can get in left flip flex. Okay. Um, you could call, uh, right flip open. Okay. There's a lot of different formations you can get in with this offense. I think there's somewhere around like 20 different formations if you count right and left, which again, seems like a lot for a youth football offense, but you're telling everybody where to go every time. Okay. And again, you don't have to have all this. Okay, again, tailor it to the kids that you have and how much they can handle, right? Um, but they, this is just kind of the full scheme, okay? So take what you will from it, um, you know, and use use what you see fit for your kids, okay? If you don't have a tight end that's athletic enough to play out here, then you don't need the open tag. But I would definitely have the flex tag, okay? Not Maybe not for the younger grades, okay? But for the higher grades, I definitely have the flex tag because it can get you in a three receiver set, maybe get some guys out of the box, make it easier to run the ball inside. It could also help out your passing game a little bit. You can get your tight end out in more space in the passing game. Okay. Um, so again, just tailor it to your kids. Okay. Um, so that's it for this video. Those are the formations. Actually, hold on, I almost forgot. We need to talk about the motions. Let's talk about the motions. So there are two motions in this offense. Okay. One for the Z and one for the F. I'll talk about the, the one for the F for the fullback first. His motion. Okay. It's called Fizz. Okay. Fizz basically tells him to motion to the other side. So like here, we're in a right formation. If we call it Fizz, he would simply just motion to the other side, basically motion into a flip alignment. Okay. Now this motion is not a like turn and run motion. It's not turning and running. It's a shuffle motion. And your fullback has to understand if you call this motion, he does not need to get down in a three point stance. Okay. Cause if he does, then he motions, it's a penalty. Okay. As far as stances go, I could really care less what kind of stance my backs are in. Um, you know, it's whatever is comfortable for them. But in this, he has to stay in a two point stance. And it's just a shuffle. He's just going to shuffle. And the quarterback's going to send him in motion. He'll, like, tap his foot back, send him in motion, okay? And basically the quarterback, he's not going to watch him. He's going to tap his foot and count 1,001, okay, and snap the ball, all right? Well, depending on how fast your fullback is doing this, meaning to count 1,001, 1,002, okay? Um, but that's the fizz motion. The other motion is for the Z. Okay. The Z's motion is called zip. And all it does is it tells him the motion towards the football. Okay. So here, this would be a right formation. We call zip 
Okay, he's just going to motion to right there. Okay, the quarterback's going to snap the ball um, when he's about three yards or so outside the nearest lineman. Okay, about two or three yards outside the nearest line. Now this motion will take some some time to get the get the timing down on it. Okay, but it's a good motion to use. Um, obviously, in the passing game, you can get your Z in the middle. You can get your your Z receiver involved more in the middle on your passing game. But you can also use it for your run game. You can motion them in here and crack on a linebacker when you run your toss play uh, or, or things like that. You could have an extra blocker for your inside runs. You could crack on inside runs okay now you can run this motion from a twin set also okay you can put your z receiver in a twin set and call zip now he's going to motion to there okay it's just an inside towards the football motion is all it is okay so those are the formations and the motions for this offense um you know again take what you need uh for your kids and uh, in the next video, we are going to talk about the bread and butter run play in this offense, which is the inside zone. And I'll draw it up against a few different fronts. Um, I'll draw it up against the main fronts that I feel like you would see in youth football. I'm not going to draw it up against every defensive front because that would take forever. Um, but I'll draw it up against the main three fronts that I feel like you would see in youth football. And then we'll go from there. Okay. So uh, I hope you were able to take something out of this video. and. Uh, uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you have any questions over anything, just leave a comment and, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, but other than that, guys, that's it. I'll see you guys later and uh, best of luck this season.